This costume is obviously not going to be looking very straight from the movie, it's more of a gender bent situation. I thrifted this skirt, although in retrospect I would have rather had one that maybe didn't have so much stretch to the fabric, as it proved itself to be harder to deal with than I thought it would be. But we will get to that. Gotta plan out at least a little bit, because if I don't I will fuck everything up. I'm gonna obviously do some around like this edge here. For now I was just mapping out where I wanted the faux cuts to go with a brown fabric marker and then made some of my own fabric paint using acrylic paint and fabric medium, about a one-to-one -one ratio. I used this and a brush I didn't care about to go all through each individual seam. and then over top of the marker, I would put down concentrating it in the middle and then cascading it out. The idea behind this is that it is to make it look as rugged, dirty, and disgusting as possible. Pyramid Head obviously doesn't get around to washing his clothes um, between murders, you know? <laughs> Once I had the brown down, that rhymed, I waited a few minutes for it to dry, but not fully, and then I came in with a black self-made fabric paint once again, and was way more aware of putting this in the center of each line. It's not life or death or the end of the world if this gets anywhere else, but I wanted it to be concentrated in the centers of the brown. When I had the top portion done, I was able to carry on to the bottom. This was a very long skirt, as you've seen. <laughs> I knew I would be wearing heels, so it did have to be longer than something I would normally go for.
Once I was happy with the brown and black placement though, I used multiple tools to add spatter effects of more black paint. and then a red to give the illusion of a bloodbath, essentially. Blood, dirt, ash, etc. Being more sure that the black was blob-like and the red was spattered. Once mostly completely dry, I had to tie everything together, no pun intended. I used black embroidery thread. This took hours to do, but I won't bore you with all of the footage because though I did film every second of it, it is confusing to watch and beyond repetitive. And it was a little bit difficult, honestly, because again, the fabric was a little stretchy. So as soon as I would grab the needle and pull it back, I would have to re-put it down in placement because it would stretch. But I sewed it up and down and sideways through all of the faux seams I made and the real seams. Crisscrossing in some areas, making it look as if it was sewn together pieces of flesh, perhaps? Or just blood and ash and dirt soaked fabric. I pushed the needle into the foam that I had underneath it so I was able to follow it under and know exactly where it was. There was a lot of fabric here, guys. <laughs> Now we're onto the faux barbed wire, which in comparison to the skirt was super easy. I used two different kinds of twine for this, just regular twine and twine wrapped wiring. For the actual color though, I mixed together some silver acrylic paint and glue, just some school glue. 
So I had the obviously silver tone of the barbed wire that we know, and also it would stick to itself when dry and have a little bit more stability to it. As for the look of the barbed wire, it was a very simple method. If you happen to have a drill handy, you guesstimate how much you'll need, double it, double it onto itself. So double in length and fold it onto itself. Place either end into the drill, lock it in and then turn it on. It will wind itself. Oh. Hey guys, duck. Okay, and then tie the end off on itself. You can do this by hand, it will just take a little bit longer. Actually, quite a bit longer. <laughs> okay. I wanted to try two different methods. The first being just placing the wired twine into the bath of paint and glue, which would give you the basic silver sheen and look, but spoiler alert, I prefer the second option which is the spray paint option. And that is using a spray paint or primer to spray the black wire first. All right, let's see when that dries. Then when dried, go in with the paint and glue mix, which is more work, but it also does make it seem a little bit more weathered and, and sells the effect better in my opinion but both definitely work. I just like to create more work for myself, apparently. I like that a lot better. That's unfortunate. Because the spray primer that I used is so expensive, I sprayed a few sprays onto the wire and then used my hands to wipe the product that was underneath on the foam and place it onto the wire again. Minimal product getting wasted in this case. While waiting for those, yes, there are multiple. To dry, I used the second twine, the one without the wire and I cut it up into smaller pieces, maybe an inch and a half to two inches in length. I did a lot of them. And I did the same process of spray paint to them, I did add a little bit of the paint and glue mix, but more on that later. Now, unfortunately, this next part I am not able to do with gloves on, so it's going to get a little bit messy. But I just want to show you guys real quick the difference. Tight curl and a loose curl. Doesn't matter which one you do, it's just two different lines. In order to attach these together and give it more of the barbed wire appearance, I took each of the smaller pieces of twine and wrapped around the wire twine, knotted it and pulled each one of the sides of the knot with a tool. Definitely not made or designed for this, but helpful. This pulled it tight and a little bit of glue and paint mix kept it secure when it dried. And yes, when you're pulling it tight, it could take off some of the paint, but eh, maybe every few inches or so. I'm putting mine at an angle because I feel like that feels more natural. I imagine doing that with gloves. Once I had them all placed where I wanted them, I cut off the ends to make them pointier and more barbed wire looking. See? Barbed wire! And 
added another generous layer of the glue and paint cocktail over top. You can also add a sealant over top of this, but I didn't find the need to. Granted, I did only wear it for a couple of hours, but if you guys want to seal it, definitely try that out. Okay, so I don't know what happened to the first portion of this, the footage for it, but I measured out what size I wanted this to be from the back of my head to the front on a downward slope. Then from the top of the back of the head to my shoulder, as I planned to have this bottom piece resting on my shoulders for extra added support. But this needed to be slightly angled as well, and then connected the two together in just a straight line once I had them drawn on the bristle board or the poster board. I cut two of these out. Using a reference photo, I was able to determine that I would also be needing four pieces to make up the back. These would need to be connected to the top at a point and then onto the bottom at an angle. I played with the measurements of this and found out what each piece would need to be and I knew I could cut off or add on to as needed if my calculations were off because math is not my strongest suit. <laughs> I did need to mess around with it a little bit in the end. But I cut those four pieces out and added tape to the back of them to temporarily place them together. and I created the shape. Regarding Pyramid Head's headpiece, again, in whatever you see him in, his helmet always has a piece at the bottom when it's flat, like a flip up. I chose it for that to be about four inches from the bottom on each piece and scored it on one side with my exacto knife. So it could easily bend up. Because everything has to meet at a point though, I needed to make this portion tapered. So the back had to have a bent piece and the front is still at a pointed end. Now this is where I did some fixing up. Because of this deviation from the original size, there was some spacing between some of the bristle board. I simply cut a few pieces to fit in those areas, put tape on the underside of it, and filled in any of those areas with hot glue. Once the hot glue dries and is painted, it actually looks like metal welding, which is honestly perfect for this. Next step was cutting the inner piece. Same steps as the rest of the headpiece. Measure, draw a line, and cut. I realized that after I was done with the first that I could just simply push the first down and onto the second one and use that as a perfect outline for the second one. Now I had the basic outline for the entire thing. Now it's time to make it one singular piece. Remember what I said about the hot glue? We're going to be going to absolute town on those. Every single scene possible. <laughs>
the headpiece has what appears to be almost mesh with possibly bolts over top of it. I wanted this to be as lightweight as possible, so I used this plastic chicken mesh from the dollar store, literally like a two bucks or something, for the inside. At first I glued it down with E6000, Left that to dry overnight with some tape on the seams. And then weighted even further down. But honestly, the wait time was just kind of ridiculous for this project because there was so much to do on it. And it wasn't holding it down as much as I wanted to. The method I liked more was simply just with hot glue, once again. Which is what I used on the other side. I'm not constantly showing the other side being done. I am right now, but not constantly. As everything I do to one side, you can imagine that I will be doing it the same way to the other. And this video is definitely long enough. The only difference being with either side beyond the glue choice was on one side, I put the mesh top to bottom over and over. And the other one, I put it side to side over and over. I prefer the side to side method. I wanted to be able to see out of this as well, but have it dark enough that you wouldn't be able to see that I could see out of it, if that makes sense. You wouldn't be able to tell, essentially. So I cut up a pair of black nylons, or pantyhose if you will, and used two layers on each side, again just placing it down with hot glue. And then one more round of the plastic chicken mesh on the outside. Yes, there is an ugly line from where the edges end, but I will be fixing that up with more bristle board. A small strip on the edge. For the detailing, his headpiece has what looks to be piping, which I emulated with foam rollers. These are so easy to detach and reattach as they are only held together by two pieces of plastic on either side and a middle piece going through that connects to each piece of plastic. I got a few different sizes, again from the dollar store, cut the biggest size down and attached two of them around a small size. I just had to make sure that whatever length I was cutting off of the blue would be cut off of the pink. To attach, I just use more hot glue. <laughs> I did make four of these, two on the bottom and two on the top. There's also some kind of like huge bolts on the side, which I originally tried to make out of a Gatorade bottle cap and air dry clay, but it almost immediately cracked and it was heavier than I anticipated. But I did use the size of it to trace onto some foam. You can see the Gatorade on it. Maybe you can't, but anyways. I still want it to be that size, so. Cut that out. I'm using this kind of foam, which is moisture resistant, rigid insulation, actually. Sounded down the edges. And use a plastic welding tool to actually shape the bolt into the shape I was going for. Once I had four of these, I also grabbed two ends of a tube, one that you might like have poster board or something wrapped around, and spray primered them black. One, to make it easier to actually paint because it's primer, and two, because if the foam pieces aren't primed, they will suck up a lot more paint. Ah! <sighs> <sighs> While waiting on those to dry, I used paper and tape to mask off the mesh and pantyhose portions as to not get any spray primer on them. And also in the long run, I could use the paper as a guide later. I glued all of the dried spray painted pieces to the headpiece, hot glued everything to make it as secure as possible. 
and then spray painted all of the foam. Finally, it was time for the huge amount of bolts. I'm using some more of the foam rollers, but this time I'm cutting them up so they are about an inch and a half thick. So many of these. <laughs> Spray painted them with the same primer until they were looking like kind of like gothic dippin' dots, I'd say. <laughs> Glue them all on with even more hot glue. When I spray painted them, it was a light coat on some, so I did the entire piece in acrylic paint. and then went over each of them as well. As for the final touches, it was time to add a finishing silver onto everything. I painted a few strokes on at a time and then used a ripped up disposable sponge to dab it around, dab dab dab, to give texture over the entire piece. Leaving some areas black though, like the faux piping on the side, the dip and dot area, painted the bolts with a generous coat of silver, no stippling involved for that one. further weathering it. I only added this in certain parts, but it was a lighter to darker washes of brown to add kind of like a rustic rust look because y'all know that he does not keep his metal up to par. Mostly the perimeter. The faux piping and the dipping dots. And eventually moving on to the back piece too. Adding one more quick coat of black acrylic paint to any spots that I may have gotten any other colors on that were supposed to be black to begin with.
I put red paint in this red cap and it looks like I did not. Adding in some red paint pretty much over top of the rusted areas to act kind of as blood, but also as just like more pure rust. Just a big old bloody rusty mess. <laughs> But I used that paper to basically just make sure I didn't put any clear coat into any of the areas where I would be seeing out of because that's going to clog up the visibility a little bit. But I did put a clear glossy clear coat all over everything just to really seal everything into place and also give it that more metallic look. I did also add a helmet into the mix so that it would actually stay on my head because that kind of thing is just too big to stay on by itself. So it would stay on my head with the helmet and then rest on my shoulders with the rest of the piece. And I just hot glued it in at the end. And we're done, guys. Keep going. Keep going. 